that I've ever seen in my life! My only problem with this plan is the costumes they're assigned. I mean, I know they're supposed to be ninjas and everything, but those costumes are so tight, I don't even think they can talk. <laughs> One of the things I love about this movie is the turtles' disguises, which is pretty much just a trench coat and a fedora hat. How can nobody recognize them in that? I mean, how stupid do people have to be to not recognize a big turtle in a trench coat? Look like sort of a big turtle in a trench coat. The movie comes to a thrilling climax at the top of a tall building, where the Shredder challenges our heroes to a man-on-turtle brawl. And of course, being the Ninja Turtles, they get their green asses handed to them. What point did we lose control here? But all that changes when Splinter comes into the picture. It's Sensei vs. Sensei, Giant Rat vs. Giant Cheese Grater. The battle of all battles begins. Here it goes. This is gonna be good. Here it comes. And he trips? What a ripoff! Mm. All I gotta say is the next film had better be a lot better. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. And what exactly is The Secret of the Ooze? It was made in a laboratory. And that's about it. There's not really any surprises on top of that. Kind of a big letdown. But the turtles are back. And this time around they're, well, more kid-friendly, I guess. After all the parents complained about the violence and swearing in the first film, you know, everything that made it good, the second film tones down the action and the bad language. So instead of using their weapons to fight people, they use stuff like cold food, belts, and yo-yos. You know, stuff you find lying around the house. So now all your kids will know how to turn ordinary household appliances into blunt, badass weapons. Thank you, parents of America! Idiots. And as for the bad language, I don't know, I don't remember too much swearing in the first film. Ninja kick the damn rabbit! Damn! Damn! Okay, okay. So every kid was swearing like a bastard after they saw this movie. But granted, it's a lot better than their original cut. Fuck that, man! Up, man? Them niggas around the corner tripped out, man! Where my- Fuck that, man! Where my strap- Fuck that sh Never let Spike Lee direct a children's movie. Can you believe this guy? So the story centers around the return of the Sinister Shredder. After doing a short ripoff of Tim Burton's Batman, he gets back into action by plotting his revenge against those pop culture spewing reptiles. Bummer. He steals a canister of ooze from that guy in Titanic and decides to make his own evil mutants. Within seconds, two innocent, harmless animals are transformed into the sinister duo of Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah, like I said, Bebop and Rocksteady. Now the one scene everyone remembers is the fight scene that takes place in the whitest of all rap clubs led by the whitest of all rappers. You guessed it, Vanilla Ice. Oh no! Gee, it looks like they're pretty freaked out about all those monsters breaking into their club. But wait a minute. I think the ice is feeling something. I think he's conjuring up a rap, a sort of ninja rap, if you will. Yo, it's the green machine. He is! Look at that! A totally unrehearsed yet somehow totally choreographed rap scene entirely made up on the fly. What talent. I gotta tell you, this guy is going places! Like the unemployment line! So the film climaxes as the Shredder drinks what's left of the mutated ooze and turns into a mutant himself. Jesus Christ, look at that. That is a badass villain. It's a super shredder. All right, this is gonna make up for the shitty climax in the last movie. Four mutant turtles versus one giant mutant shredder. This is gonna be good. Shredder can survive a seven-story fall and a dump truck crushing him, and yet a Super Shredder can't survive a bunch of wood falling on him? Bullshit! 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 <sighs> you know, I'm starting to realize that, uh, these movies aren't quite the masterpieces I remember them to be. I mean, they're weird as hell, they don't make any sense, and they keep pissing me off with their anti-climaxes. But, I shouldn't give up hope. After all, there is still one last movie left, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. And seeing how now they've had two movies to experiment with and find out what works and what doesn't, I think we can safely assume that this is going to be the best of the bunch. So, sit back and let's enjoy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Oh my god, it's so terrible! It's so terrible! <laughs> <laughs> It's awful! It's, it's
It's terrible! It's... it's... It's so bad, I am forced to make up a word to describe how bad it is. This movie is... is... Horribafuckus! It's the most horribafuckus movie I've ever seen in my entire life! <sighs> okay, like I said, these movies aren't the masterpieces we remember them to be. But it's best not to look at them as movies, but more as... a homework assignment. Make a movie about four mutated turtles in their late teens who are named after Renaissance painters, led around by a giant rat, no ninjutsu, eat pizza, dress up like flashers, fight a guy who's named after a cheese grater, and make it plausible. And you know what? With the exception of the last movie, I'd probably give this project an A. Minus, but still an A. I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it, so you don't have to.